Building on from last week's video on frequency of training, I figured it might be a good idea to discuss training volume load and just how important it is in relation to strength and muscle hypertrophy. Bear in mind that frequency and load are often interdependent with extremely high loads generally requiring a lower frequency and an extremely high frequency generally requiring a lighter load. That said, training volume load can be expressed as the total sets times reps times load performed in any given training session. It's a simple formula and its simplicity may be the reason that many authors, bodybuilders and gurus have popularized a greater training volume as the cornerstone of growth. Just as with any variable considered in a study situation, special attention needs to be made to ensure that TVL is the only controllable variable with all else being held equal. In the trained population, Ostrowski et al. examined the effects of different volumes over a 10 week period, with the only variable being the number of sets and thus load performed by each group. The training protocols of the three groups were as follows. The low volume group performed one set per exercise, moderate performed two, while high volume performed four. In addition, all sets were performed to muscular failure, accompanied by a mandatory three minute recovery period to reduce any effects of fatigue. This 3 minute recovery window would have been beneficial for the high volume group, however it may have its drawbacks as will be seen later. Nonetheless, the results of the study showed no significant differences in relation to muscle size, strength and upper body power over the 10 weeks. Some results were as follows but take note of the variation between groups and outcomes. In making sense of this, the authors suggested that low and high volume training may lead to micro traumas of the muscle fibres but the high volume training did so at the expense of additional time and effort. Ria et al. also examined the effects of different volumes where 16 trained men were assigned to either a one set or a three set group and then proceeded to train three days per week for a 12 week period. One immediate difference in the testing approach is that individuals were only allowed one to two minutes rest between sets as opposed to the three minute recovery period we have just witnessed. The logic was that Allowing too much rest between sets would limit the added stress of a multiple set training program by allowing the muscle fibres already recruited to be recruited again rather than making use of new muscle fibres. In addition, the periodization model was one of daily undulating periodization, which would lead us to believe that it was structured in a manner similar to the following. Now this is speculation on our part as this portion of the training program wasn't expressly revealed. Ultimately, the higher volume group experienced greater strength increases in both the bench press and the leg press, with the results of the leg press being of statistical significance. As previously mentioned, these results could differ from the previous study due to the shorter rest periods and the higher muscle group training frequency. Looking at more extreme set ranges, German volume training has been popularized as a style of training where exercises are performed for 10 sets of 10 repetitions. A 2016 paper examined the effects on muscle mass and strength gains between two groups over a six week period. Muscle group training frequency was once per week and rest periods were 60 to 90 seconds in length and the results were as follows. These three studies all seem to contradict each other. On one hand, the Ria et al study suggested that a higher set number may be beneficial while the German volume training study suggested that a lower relative number was superior. The first study provided conflicting results outright, not drawing a distinction between the number of sets. In untrained populations, there does seem to be a greater number of studies suggesting that a higher volume is better, but I've only read the abstract of those studies and will do a full read through for a later video. Objectively, from the findings of these studies, we can set the following guidelines. Select 4-6 to six exercises performed by 1-5 to five sets times your goals recommended rep range times your goals recommended intensity. Naturally, this is quite a large range and thus might not be of practical benefit, but it does highlight the individuality of weight training as well as the degree of differences in the studies examined. What is up guys, thank you so much for staying until the end and for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you think someone else might enjoy it, then please, you know, share it with them as well. Okay, that's, you know, I'm asking for a lot there. But, um, <laughs> Isaiah's in the background, give the camera a wave. Yeah, no one told you to do that, son. I'm just kidding. Thank you for watching the video, guys. And we will see you on... Monday. Monday. And we will probably have chicken nuggets. And we'll probably talk about chicken nuggets. And okay, that okay. bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Break beyond. I want something just like this.